Lisa, thank you so much for joining me this morning on a, on a nice, cool Monday. I appreciate Thanks, it. We're here, we're here to talk about AMC Plus's uh, limited series, Ragdoll, which I've had a lot of fun with the first few episodes. Tell us a little bit about it. I'm glad you had fun with it. I don't know if that's a good sign of your character or not, because it's pretty gruesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a aptly named show about a body that is stitched together um, from six different body parts to make one ragdoll body part, um, which was very real. Uh, <laughs> and we have three detectives. I play Baxter. Um, D.I. Baxter, who are all going through their own personal post-traumatic stress or trauma from other cases as they try and find out who is involved in this murder case. So, so the reason I say I, I had fun with it is because I enjoy <laughs> series films that em let me emote emotions. And in this case, I find myself very frustrated because uh, because and it's and it's interesting because it's the human aspect of it that frustrates me because you're so used to seeing on television a lot of officers being so um mentally capable of the job and and mm -hmm. almost in an unrealistic way but mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. ones make sure to no this guy is just as real as you are and he his emotions sometimes are going to get the better of him her emotions are going to get the better of her and this is this is the result and i enjoy that Oh, good. Yeah, I think that's this thing that really drew me to Freddie's writing, Freddie Sidewell, an incredible writer. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't want to play a cop that was just good at their job. And um, especially after the year we've had in terms of the way that the police are viewed. Um, but the fact that we see these people with their own turmoils and their own traumas and the fact that they get in the way and possibly aren't very good at their jobs because of it um, was really appealing to me because um, they use humour as a form of uh, therapy, I suppose, and coping mechanism. And probably a very like British dogmatic way of like being quite stubborn as well um, and detrimenting, I think. But Lucy Hale's character comes in to point out that the fact that our brains are as human as the people that we're trying to catch right. probably has something to say about the work that we do. And we should analyze ourselves before we even start catching any people that we want to claim as mad or psychotic or um, all the other otics <laughs> that we might give them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the best lines came, uh, I'm pretty sure it was from Lucy also in one of the or one of the early episodes where she where she uh, points at her partner and says, you had you have uh, um, this this problem right here. Uh, tell us about it. And he's like, no, I can't because it, it, because I have to look I have to look the families in the eye and they need to know that I'm OK. And it's like, mm -hmm. no. And then she responds with him in a sense. No, it's because you you have these issues that can help us. Uh, make better choices and I thought that was uh, that was a great line yeah yeah I mean there's there's some conkers <laughs> of lines I mean I think Freddie's just very good at also having very intimate conversations with us as actors as well and and there's not just stuff about post-traumatic stress but there's the institutionalized racism within the police force and you'll see that mm -hmm. unravel itself a bit more in the series um you know sexism in the workplace it gets the better of a lot of these characters um so it's less of a show about who done it but what you're going to do yeah. about it once you found this guy and what is justice anyway um is just finding him putting him in prison the end um no possibly <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, we'll see why <laughs> um yeah and and you, you said it just right i think i I kind of expected that, you know, your traditional CSI type show or something like that. But no, it's not. This is this is more about the officers and their lives than it is really about about this really, really frustrating killer. Um, and, and it makes for for a, for a really good show. Tell us a little bit about your character. Baxter um, used to be under Rose's like levels. He used to be her boss um, and that's something interesting in the way that you look at the way that they interact as well. Um, I think the way that Baxter treats Edmonds 
because now she's boss is kind of like a bit of an initiation thing. She probably would have been treated exactly the same by Rose as she <laughs> is quite rude to Edmund's poor girl. Um, she has come from, I think, a background of a military background. It's mentioned about her father, maybe later, and, and maybe someone that was quite isolated from, mm -hmm. from friends, from the world. And she's had to travel around the world a lot in sort of expat sort of parts of the world. Um, and then you find her in this police force and possibly in a place for the first time that she feels like it's her family. So I think she's intensely um, involved in the work that she does. And it means that this relationship with Rose possibly is her only friend. And there's, there's complications with that about how to, again, get by on a more professional level. Um, I think she's possibly less um, worried about what happens to the people that she catches once she's done her job, whereas mm -hmm. Rose wants some sort of um, finite justice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but maybe he starts to sway her as well, and she starts to realise that actually me just being here and doing this might not be enough. Um, so, yeah, she's in this kind of tumultuous the idea of what being in the police force might actually mean being a young brown woman as well mm -hmm. she kind of becomes the face of this case as like who is this person who's in charge of the world's most gruesome thing that's going on at the moment um and that also gets in the way of her just trying to do her job rather than being heralded for someone that's you know a bit of a superhero and she's like I'm not I'm just a human being trying to do this can everyone just shut up stop giving me flowers and um let me get on with it so I think she both wants to be there to be a representational you know change in the police force but also just can everyone go over it and let me concentrate um so yeah this this idea of like institutions and um I mean, we see it in so many workplaces, but it, it mm -hmm. prevents her from just being able to concentrate. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of layers to it. Really, really, uh, yeah. really well done. It speaks to the writing. Uh, where, where did you find Baxter uh, to to portray her? Interesting. Um, I have read quite a lot of articles. I've actually completely forgotten the name of. There was a policewoman in um, New Orleans who was like, there's this amazing article about the first black policewoman in New Orleans. Oh, I wish I could remember her name, so frustrating. But she was very, very young. She was only about 28 and no one believed that she was a policewoman. So she managed to get her, you know, undercover cases done extremely well. Um, no one would believe when she was undercover that she would be on the other side as well <laughs> so she also found out a lot of people so that was a really good inspiration Jackie Jackie oh so frustrated though I can't remember her name I'm gonna have to email it to you um, <laughs> but um and then also just watching lots of um I love Korean cinema so um memories of murder old boy um just that kind of rhythm that sort of just pushes through the genre and you get like many genres in one um so yeah I love Korean stuff <laughs> I think they do they do like the violent and the mundane together very very well their yeah their entertainment value is very very high I I, I find myself very into uh Korean horror films they they, yeah. they do ooh, they do scares quite quite well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Freddie and, and Toby, who um, Toby was our first block director, they said, you know, watch Memories of Murder and um, Old Boy, because they, they were a lot of like the rhythms that they were wanting us to talk in. Um, and a lot of the design, this kind of retro feel that you have in, in the show is like very much um, that, which is great. Alisa, thank you so much for your time. I, I appreciate being able to talk to you about Ragdoll for a few minutes this morning. Thank uh, so, you, man. Uh, it was very nice to virtually meet you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on, on the show. Great. Thank you so much. Have Take a good care. rest of the day. Bye. Thank you, too.